So, uh, hey everybody, this is the West side amp, West Spawn Defences, um, and actually this is the only uh, spawn for the West side amp, so uh, what that means is it does get hit pretty badly, um, but it's actually not that tricky. Um, and first let me just briefly talk about the amp itself. As always, I've built around my amp. And I have gas traps inside the amp, which is if the mini boss uh, spawns here and breaks through. But I also have this little mini boss trap on the outside here, and mini boss trap on this outside, this bit here, because I've had the mini boss come both ways up to the amp before. Um, I do get the mini boss quite a bit on this amp actually, uh, so just something to be aware of. Um, I, I, it is it is random, but I do seem to get it quite badly here. So uh, this um, this amp is actually entirely lobber proof, even if you have a naked amp. And I'm, <laughs> I I did a ton of experimenting until I finally figured out a way that the lobbers wouldn't throw up my tunnels on this side. And then, as I said, somebody said, "Why don't you just build around your amps?" And I did. And then you know I didn't have any issues with lobbers again. But this is a lobber proof amp. Even if you want a naked amp, you can do it. Um, and uh, as well, I used to have a ton of issues with durability on this amp, but what I did was I just opened up all the sides and now I don't really have any issues with durability either. So um, let me just, the spawns kind of come from around about here, spawning all the way across here. And what I have done is I have this side blocked up. It's also a block for the dip amp west as well. So I've got a ceiling here um, and a cone above the ceiling and then a wall here and here uh, and I have a block through the wall. That's partly to stop uh, the husks from coming this way as well. Um, so that's why it's not facing in a particular direction. And then uh, I have a wall here. Uh, a cone here, uh, two more walls here, and I've got another cone here, so that's if they break through this particular wall, then they will um, have to go through this cone and this wall, um, and then on the other side of this wall I have another block off. <laughs> um, I don't think actually you could experiment and see whether you need, okay so there's the you could experiment and see whether so many block offs are needed. I think probably cut one and see. You could probably cut this final layer and see uh, if it still worked. But um, as always, it's it's trial and error, and um, sometimes it's better just to be safe. Anyway, I never get any hustle coming this way. So um, it is an effective block off even if it's a little bit overkill. Uh, what I find is that with having three possible pathways, the husks do split quite evenly across them, but you get the majority up this way. So because um, of this little dip bit, they all come through this side um, and they get hit by the sound wall. And then um, most just walk straight up here. And I, I do still have this bit here because sometimes you'll get like blasters who like to sort of do little side shuffles and do weird things so um, they will get hit by these traps but most of the house just come straight up here get hit by the wooden floor spikes hit by the wall launcher and they will have been hit by a series of drop traps on the way now um, what the the wall that's here that prevents the husk from being thrown onto the lobber shield if I left it like this, the wall launch would be so strong that the husks would literally get thrown out here. Um, there's other ways you could do it, of course. You could... Um, you, we don't technically need these walls, actually. I partly put them there when I was trying to prevent the lobbers from getting through. Um, so you could maybe have the higher ceilings, one tile further, and then uh, that would push the husks back even further. So that's something you could think about doing if you're struggling with trapping on this bit. I don't really struggle with trapping, so it's not, not something I needed to do. 
Um, then we have another floor spike and a wall launcher here, which just pushes them back. So that sometimes the wall launcher can be used at this point because this wall launcher would push them all the way back to here. And then that would push them all the way down. So um, we do have some darts. Uh, this dart, if it's triggered, will hit all the way through to here. Uh, same with this dart. So that's kind of a nifty little function of the darts. And as you can see, there are no ceilings on this part at all. This bit, this bit, this bit, and this bit. That was how I managed to get the lobbers to settle down by not having ceilings in this middle section. Um, but you might want to put ceilings. <laughs> uh, I would probably say if you, you know, for example, if you are struggling, uh, like if you don't have great trap durability and you need to kill husks more frequently, then um, you could put just ceiling electrics all the way around here. That's probably what I would advise, and that would be very useful. You could also put a floor here. Again, I don't need one. You could put a dart here. Again, I don't need one, but you might. Um, so let's pause here and go to the middle tunnel. The middle tunnel, most of them get hit by this dance trap. You don't tend to have husks coming in this way. The husks that spawn over here tend to go up this side. So they are mostly coming through this tile with the dance trap. Um, they'll get hit by the drops here. And then this wall launcher will push them off down to the third tunnel. Um, and we also have a floor spike. So then I've just put another dance trap up here just because in case they don't get hit here, basically. Um, another way you could do it, I suppose, is you could have a dance trap right here. Uh, that might be effective. And then you could have a wall launcher up here. Um, so this is the dart that I was telling you about before. There's its fellow dart. They can both kind of hit as far as each other, which is funky. Um, this is a high damage tile. So the tar trap stops them, and then the broadsides will do damage to them. So side note about broadsides, they're most effective when they're used in this format here, one tile apart. And that is because broadsides, uh, they fire these cannons out of these holes, right? And each cannon does a little bit of damage each time it passes through a husk. So um, and they will travel for a certain direction. So let's look at some examples here, right? Uh, with broadsides. Um, this is what's up, up top. You could have them like this, for example, let's say. Um, so you could have a broadside here and a broadside here. And very often, the worst option of all, <laughs> you see people with just a single broadside, right? This is, if you have, let me craft one up it there. Um, oh, there, there. <laughs> So, important lesson about broadsides, right? There we go. This is three different ways to have broadsides, and I'm going to go and look at them from above. Right, this one here, with one tile just shooting out into the wilderness, that is the worst way you can possibly use a broadside. <laughs> because... The broadside, go, the, each cannon goes through the husk once and that's it. And it just travels along here and then just like, bleh, nothing, right? Yet yeah, you see this a lot on public missions. This here on the end is better because they are going to bounce off each other. What happens is the cannon shoots, it bounces off this side, it comes back to this side, and at some point it kind of runs out. And every time it passes through the husk, it does damage. So this is better if you've got two facing each other. But this one here, let me get rid of the rubbish one. This one here is the best, and that is because the cannons will just bounce, 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 bounce off each other multiple times. So that's how they do good damage, because individually, the broadside cannons do not do good damage. You need to put them facing each other in order to do good damage. So now you know, just never use a single broadside on its own again. Thank you. Um, public service done for the day. So 
you can see the two tunnels then join into each other here and then we've got four tiles of tar pits on the floor and alternator setup so I've got a launcher 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 and then darts um, seeing electric at the beginning because it's gonna hit loads of tusks Loads of tusks, loads of husks out here as well because of its range. Then gas, gas, and gas. And then we got dart here, dart here, dart here, and dart here. This is overkill. Um, but because this is the only approach to the West Side Amp then it does get hit an awful lot and sometimes you'll find those beginning traps have run out completely and actually you are relying on those last few tiles and sometimes you get the smasher wave on the amp or do you always get the smasher wave on the amp? I can't remember exactly when the smasher wave is but I remember I have had it on this amp before multiple times so and that's quite late on as well so you just need those extra tars at the end there. This side here um, we have a couple of uh, drop traps just pushing them back down the hill. This side you tend to not get many husks up just like the flingers and stuff. It's not as uh, as many as previous. So they all get hit by this sound wall here. Then we've got um, the wool launcher, wool launcher, wool launcher, wool launcher. Flo wooden floor, wooden floor, tar, tar. Ceiling electric, ceiling electric, gas, gas, and dance trap, dart, dart, dart. Um, and yeah, that's that side. So, um, in terms of a lobber shield, you want to make sure again it goes out nine tiles from the amp, and that takes you to here. So, um, if we think about the hill where the, this first hill starts, it's one tile beyond that you need to go out to. And again, the, it's this it's this tile here that is the most important one. This is sort of stopping the flingers, but I just find it easier to do a big row anyway. Um, yeah, and actually because the west side amp and the drop amp are exactly in the same position westwards, then the, uh, the lobber shield you can just carry all the way along to the drop amp. So there you go, that is the West Side Amp West Bond.